Last week, the Canadian and Alberta governments uh, signed an agreement to preserve caribou habitat. And this is a big deal because there are conservationists and environmentalists and indigenous communities and the oil and gas industry and everybody's got an oar in the water here and it's a very difficult situation to sort out. To try to get a handle around it, we're going to talk to Eric Denhoff, who is the former Deputy Minister for Alberta uh, Environment, Climate Change and Parks. So welcome to the interview, Eric. Thanks very much, Mark. I appreciate it. Now, look, you've been through the agreement. Why don't uh, we start with just give us an overview of, of what was signed? Sure. The, the, keeping in mind that the provinces in Canada have an obligation under the federal uh, rules to protect 65% of caribou habitat, which is proving increasingly challenging. And so the agreement lays out basically that the Alberta government over the next five years will come up with range plans showing how they'll protect the necessary caribou habitat. And it also provides for mechanisms under which the province can continue to uh, have oil and gas and forestry activity take place uh, as long as, in theory, it meets the um, dual obligations of protecting the caribou and, and development. Now, one of the issues that I've heard from the uh, conservationists is that uh, while these kinds of agreements protect the caribou, they often are not very good for predators like wolves. And you and I have talked about this in the past. Uh, what are the kind of implications of this agreement uh, for predators like wolves? Yeah, the agreement enables Alberta to continue with the wolf cull. Uh, nothing in the agreement precludes that. The assumption is that it's on a temporary basis until the habitat restoration is significant enough that the caribou herds can recover. The problem is that the caribou herds are going to take decades and decades to recover, if ever. And so I expect that you'll see, uh, barring some other change, that uh, wolf and uh, predator uh, control will go on for, for a long, long time. And in terms of the oil and gas industry, which I gather in the past has had some pretty significant concerns because they don't want to get frozen out of leases uh, because of uh, an agreement like this, how are they responding to this agreement? I, I think so far they've been fairly positive. I, I mean, one thing to keep in mind is that some of the really key areas uh, for caribou uh, protection, the little smoky Alapesh area north of Hinton around Grand Prairie sort of area, industry isn't chomping at the bit to go drill a lot more wells right now with, you know, oil prices in the tank and, and uh, even with recovering uh, gas prices. So industry has been willing to wait for a while in some of those areas without going back in. But what it does do is it says to industry that you don't have to close up shop in order to meet these obligations. If you think that 25% of Alberta basically is caribou habitat and all of that's in the north, in theory, you'd have to set aside half of northern Alberta to meet that 65% obligation uh, under some construct. So the, the, the fact that the agreement allows industry to keep working I think it will be supported, obviously, by industry. The, the criticism will come from environmental groups when the first on-the-ground manifestations of that take place. So if the forestry companies start to go into core areas of the Little Smoky Alapesh, or the oil and gas industry starts to go into drill areas that are considered prime caribou habitat without sufficient protection, then environmentalists will be upset. I was reading in the press release, Eric, that uh, Jonathan Wilkinson, the federal environment minister, said that this time around they tried a different, more collaborative approach instead of just issuing an order from, from uh, Ottawa. And is that an improvement uh, over what has come, what was uh, tried before? Well, it's an improvement politically for, for the government, certainly federal and provincial. Both the previous NDP government provincially and the current conservatives have set up regional task forces to try and divine a way through this terrible land use uh, dilemma, how much land do you set aside for caribou versus for industry? Um, and I think that what it's done is it's allowed a lengthy runway for governments to figure out with local communities how they'll uh, come up with these range plans and they've allowed themselves five years to do it. For the federal government, it works because the lawsuit that environmentalists had launched against the federal government for allegedly refusing to implement the endangered species uh, legislation has gone away as a result of this agreement and one with BC. And so for Ottawa, they say, look, we can demonstrate, we can make progress on this file. Litigation's gone away and uh, the local governments are going to figure this out. 